Welcome to The Detail. I'm your host, Kathy Antunes, and you are listening to The Detail on WSLR 96.5 LPFM in Sarasota, Florida, and WBPV 100.1 LPFM in Bradenton, Florida. Well, we're less than a week away from our local elections on August 20th, and they will be decisive elections for at least one race in the school board. This is um, Liz Barker and Karen Rose. There are only two people running. So whoever wins that race is going to be elected to the school board. That's Karen Rose and Liz Barker. The other school board race has three candidates. It's possible if one of them gets over 51%, uh, then that per, or 50%, excuse me, then that person would win the election. There would not be a runoff in November. Those three candidates are Tom Babbitts, Tom Edwards, and Greg Wood running for school board. Everybody gets to vote in those races. So no matter what party affiliation you have in Sarasota County, you get to choose who our school board members will be. It's a nonpartisan race. Um, and we've also got important county commission races for District 1 and District 3. Um, Alex Coe and Teresa Mast are running against each other in District 1. And then in District 3, which is the Venice area, it's Tom Knight and Neil Rainford. So given the horrible flooding that's happened in Sarasota, um, I know that there are there may be actually more focus on our county commission race than we're used to simply because um, people in district one were heavily impacted by the flood. I don't know that Venice, well, there was flooding in Venice too. I think this is top of mind for most voters. The question is, what's going on with our infrastructure? There's so much building happening. There's a lot of concern about overdevelopment. So, it's going to matter who's sitting in those seats. So today, what I want to share with you is my research on dark money, um, particularly in our local races. That's really what I focus on is our local politics. And so I want to just walk through PACs that are active in our local elections, also some historic PACs that have been uh, active in our local elections. And I will post it on YouTube so you can actually see these charts. And I'm going to do my best during this hour to just describe it to you. So if you're listening, you'll get a good idea of what's happening with PACs in our local elections. And they can make a big difference, even a decisive difference in the outcome, simply because local races are down ballot races. And it's it's not that voters aren't smart. Voters are very smart, but we're inundated as voters. So a lot of us may not know the down ballot candidates as well as we do who we're voting for Senate or who we're going to vote for at a state level. So what's happening these days right now and a time honored practice in local elections is stuffing your mailbox full of mailers which either promote a candidate or trash another candidate. And it wasn't until the 2010 decision by the Supreme Court, Citizens United, and, and there were contemporaneous decisions, basically money became um, equated with speech. And so you had corporate personhood in the political arena, meaning corporations could give as much as they wanted. And then you also had political committees being able to take an unlimited donation. So while we have campaign finance limits and Florida has changed at the state level in the Sarasota County Charter and in our city charter in the city of Sarasota, the campaign finance limit is $200. In the city, you actually have to be a person. You can't be a corporation. In the county, you can be a corporation. What the state legislature did, which has not been challenged, I do, actually don't know if it's really kosher that they did this, but they made, they took away campaign finance limits that were um, decided locally, and they imposed 
the state campaign finance limit, which is not $200, it's $1,000. So what we're seeing right now is a lot more money from deep-pocketed donors getting into our local races. And one of the ways you'll you'll get text messages, that's a, a way that they communicate with voters, uh, mailers, lots of mailers, and some of them are very questionable in the things they say um, about, about other candidates. So we'll talk about a good historic example of that. But then uh, robocalls may be another way. I've even had phone calls where it came up on my phone that Capital One Visa was calling me. So I thought, you know, I have a v Capital One Visa. So I thought it was my credit card company. And then it turned out to be a town hall, quote unquote, a town hall meeting for a school board candidate, which honestly I think was probably pre recorded. But they put this little teaser if you'd like to ask a question then press one. So I pressed one and I realized, wow, I have no way of actually knowing if this town hall is live. It sounds live, but it could just be recorded. So there's lots of ways that this PAC money and campaign money can be used to capture the attention of voters. Uh, but your mailbox is, is really one of the most um, often used ways to get voter attention. So I want to look back. We first started seeing this happen in our local elections um, around mm, 2012. So about two years after Citizens United. And I'm going to show you a couple of examples from Manatee County because that's where we really saw it at first. And there was a sales tax referendum, it was about funding a clinic to uh, for indigent healthcare or people in, you know, um, strained financial circumstances or of modest means. And they, the, the hospitals were seeing a lot of indigent patients or patients without insurance in their ERs. So they, they wanted the county to fund a clinic. Well, there's three uses for sales tax at the county level. The county gets some of that state sales tax back and can allocate it, or they can tack on a, a piece, a little like half penny or a penny um, onto the sales tax as well. And that money can go to public safety. So first responders, firefighters, police, it can go to healthcare, like a healthcare clinic, or it can go to infrastructure. And what we saw in Manatee County were developer donations um, or, or PAC donations and a PAC that was active against this uh, sales tax for healthcare that, that turned out to be funded by development interests. I think, you know, they wanted the money for infrastructure. So there's one pack called Manatee for Common Sense. It actually, in many of these uh, packs, were chaired by um, Eric Robinson. If you're looking at the screen, the one in green, the ones in green are um, administered. The treasurer is Eric Robinson, and his accounting firm put ten thousand dollars into this pack, Manatee for Common Sense. They were actually paid five thousand dollars for accounting services, and then another pack. Common Sense for Manatee, very similar name, put in $4,400. And there was uh, mailers that went out attacking this um, plan for sales tax money to go to healthcare. Now, another PAC that was active in that race was Manatee Against Taxation. And Manatee Against Taxation took in $66,000 from a PAC called the Committee to Protect Florida Seniors. It also took in $50,000 from Robinson Hanks Accounting. Um, so they had a total of 115 grand. Robinson Hanks Accounting got all of that 50 grand back plus 4,500, 4,600 bucks uh, as accounting fees. And one of the things I've noticed with PACs is that their accounting fees vary wide, widely. 
some pay nothing for accounting and then some pay like this one is practically half of what they took in went out for accounting services. The Committee to Protect Florida Seniors was a mystery. Who was giving them money? They were funding a PAC against this indigent health care tax uh, use, sales tax use in, in around 2012, 2013. But nobody knew who was, who was funding the Committee to Protect Florida Seniors. So I did some research and found um, there was a $66,000 donation from another PAC. So it's the same donation amount, Veterans for Conservative Principles. But Veterans for Conservative Principles got a donation from a um, LLC that was incorporated outside of the state. It was either Delaware or Wyoming. It, the address was a Sarasota address, but Greenpoint Investors was the LLC that gave $66,000. So you see this churn of money happening. And the idea behind the shell game or one pack or a company giving to a pack giving to another pack is plausible deniability for the donor that there isn't a direct relationship between the donor's donation and the actual use or pack that's going to be using that money. Sometimes there's a direct relationship, uh, but they're hiding behind a pack. But a lot of times that money is churned from one pack to another. Uh, we also saw in the Committee to Protect Florida Seniors that there were companies affiliated with developers, like Pat Neal, a company gave $2,000 to the Committee to Protect Florida Seniors. Randy Benderson, uh, Benderson Development Affiliates gave $7,500. And then um, Carlos Baruf, an affiliate of his, gave $10,000. These folks would have an interest in seeing the taxing capacity for uh, the sales tax of Manatee County being preserved for in infrastructure and not healthcare. So that would be a motivation. Um, and then once that, the Committee to Protect Florida Seniors also gave an, a 34 grand to a PAC called Take Back Our Government. Take Back Our Government was the pact that attacked Joe McClash. He was a former Manatee County Commissioner. He had much trusted, beloved Republican, conservative, but also an environmentalist who was very um, dedicated to protecting Florida um, assets, if you will, Florida, uh, the environment protecting our wetlands, which we've just seen how important wetlands protection is to manage our stormwater, to protect us from flooding. Anyway, Take Back Our Government was chaired by Bob Wechter. And Bob Wechter was, is the former chair of the Sarasota County Republican Party. Take Back Our Government got... Um, got funds from the Gulf Coast Builders Exchange, got funds from the Committee to Protect Florida Seniors, that $34,000 that I told you about, got funds from Citizens Have Rights in Sarasota, which is a, a local PAC, um, got funds from a, a company called Florida West Coast Holdings as well. But they went after, the mailers um, that went after Joe McClash said that he was... Um, a supporter of President Obama, that he was for Obamacare, um, basically tried to make Mr. McClash look like he was a rhino, Republican in name only, that he wasn't a true conservative, which was a total lie. And he wound up being de narrowly defeated by Betsy Benack, who you know I've had on my show. She said, I, I truly had no idea they were doing this. I did not endorse this. Um, I believe her, actually, Mr. Um, McClash and Ms. Benack recently worked um, to protest against the gutting of wetlands protections by the Manatee County Commission. Uh, but 
this was the first time in Sarasota and Manatee County that we saw pretty um, dishonest mailers inundating voters' mailboxes in the last few weeks of a campaign. And why is that important? A grassroots candidate like Joe McClash didn't have the time or the money to mount an effective response. So these are the days right now, we're less than a week away from the August 20th primary. This will happen again in November as well, but those last few weeks of the campaign, um, very often if there's gonna be a trashing of candidates or lies about candidates, you'll see a lot of them come out toward the end when the person being attacked doesn't have the time or money uh, to mount an effective response. So you need to be aware of that as a voter and be suspicious of the mailers that you get and who is funding them. Um, many of you may remember the chair of that pact, Take Back Our Government, um, Mr. Wechter was found, uh, well, he pled guilty to stealing the identity of Lourdes Ramirez, who was running for county commission. I believe this was back in 2014 or 2016. And he was surveilled on a Publix video camera, taking out a credit card in Lourdes's name. He then used that card to make donations in her name to Democrats. And it, Keith Fitzgerald, who was running for the state legislature, sent Lourdes Ramirez a thank you card uh, for her donation. And that's how she realized something's wrong. She said, I, I didn't donate to you. Why are you thanking me? And he said, well, we have a donation from you and here's the information. So this was identity theft, uh, which is actually a felony, but Mr. Wechter pled guilty to a misdemeanor and he, you know, expressed remorse for what he did. But I bring this up because there is a, a real incentive. There are people profiting from land use decisions in Florida. There are people profiting from corporate charter school decisions in Florida. Um, fortunes can be made by local decision-making, especially regarding real estate. So there are people who are highly motivated to do their best to control who sits in the county commission seats and who sits in those school board seats. Recently, we've seen a PAC that is really going after Tom Knight, making claims that he's not really a Republican, the same kind of stuff. I won't go into that. I don't want to perpetuate misinformation. But so Tom Knight was our sheriff in Sarasota County for 12 years, and he didn't get attacked by PACs like he's getting attacked now. Apparently, whoever is funding this, the people which we'll talk about, were fine with him as the sheriff, but they're not so happy with the idea that he would be in the county commission seat. Only they know exactly why. But again, um, having a malleable, um, friendly vote on the county commission, if you want a property rezoned, if you want to take a rural piece of land, like we have you know, out east, which is rapidly, rapidly disappearing. If you want to rezone that and put a thousand homes or 2000 home or a hundred homes, just depending on the size of the property, but rural land is, is zoned one unit or one dwelling for every five acres. That's the densest that a rural zoning would be. You can put one home on every half acre and you've got five acres, you just, gone from one house to 10. It's, it's a huge increase in land value. So anyway, there is a pack. it's called COP PC. It's a Tallahassee pack. Well, actually uh, registered with the state. And this is another thing. These PACs that are active in county elections are really supposed to be registered at the county level. And a lot of them don't do that, right? They register with the state. This PAC 
is sending out these very negative mailers about Tom Knight. And I kind of peeled back the onion and where's the money coming from with this cop PC? And if you look at the list of their donors, there's individual people from Pompano Beach and Miami Beach and Bo Boca Raton, names that, you know, you gotta ask who benefits, right? Que bono, when you're following the money. It doesn't make much sense that these folks would have a dog in the fight in a Venice County Commission race. But there are two PACs that also gave money. One is called Save Our Quality of Life, and another is called Citizens Alliance for Florida's Economy. Okay. Well, Pat Neal gave $5,000, or excuse me, $6,000 to Save Our Quality of Life, which gave $49,000 to COP PC, the, the PAC that's attacking Tom Knight. So that makes sense. There's another PAC called Citizens Alliance for Florida's Economy. It's chaired by Anthony Petticini. They gave $15,000 to COP PC, the PAC attacking Tom Knight, but they've also given the net of what they've given is over $200,000 to save our quality of life. So they're funding the other PAC that's funding COP PC. There's over $11 million in this Citizens Alliance for Florida's economy that's chaired by Anthony Petticini. And Benderson Development has put nearly $30,000 into that pack. Pat Neal had affiliates have put in over $140,000 into that pack. Carlos Baruf affiliates have put over $240,000 into that pack. There's another pack called Libertatum that has given over $120,000 to Pettuccini's Citizens Alliance for Florida's Economy. And then you've got what's called Conservative Leadership Committee. It's identified as a political committee on donation spreadsheets. It's actually not, though. There is no political committee called Conservative Leadership Committee. And on different spreadsheets, it's indicated that Conservative Leadership Committee is doing business as another PAC called Conservatives. It This is where the shell game is off the rails. They're conflating Anella a firm at, uh, registered on SunBiz with an actual political committee. And the kicker here is that that political committee, which is the um, entity conservative leadership committee says they're doing business as the political committees called conservatives. It's been given over $2 million by Pat Neal. So conflating these two entities is another way, conflating a committee, political committee with a corporation is another way that donors in our area, typically developers like Pat Neal, Carlos Baruf, um, Schrader Manatee Ranch, Rex Jensen, and Benerson Development. Those are really, the, those are huge donors. They're not the only ones, but those are the ones I see the most often. Um, so Conservative Leadership Committee, aka Conservatives, gave $330,000 to Libertatum, and that PAC gave $122,500 to Pettuccini's Citizens Alliance for Economy. I know if you're listening, this is tough to follow. Um, it's easier if, if you can check it out on YouTube when you have time. But the point is... There's so much money that's being handed from one committee to another in an effort to hide it from voters, to hide who's donating. But there's a clear path back to those um, developers that I mentioned. In this case, Pat Neal, Carlos Baruf, and Benderson. And you, you know, why would they be so against Tom Knight? Why would they be on a money trail? for PACs that are attacking Tom Knight or that are funding attacks against Tom Knight. The other thing that's important to note here 
is this huge pack with over $11 million chaired by Anthony Pettuccini. Anthony Pettuccini is a political consultant. His firm is Sim Wins, and you can see this pack that is um, attacking Tom Knight in these mailers is sending out postcards and has um, been paid by the PAC Cop PC, which is also chaired by somebody at the same address as Pettuccini's political consulting firm. So who is Anthony Pettuccini? Well, Manatee County voters know Anthony Pettuccini very well from the 2000 race where they saw such a big change in their county commission. Uh, Pettuccini was the political consultant that helped usher in a new slate of county commissioners in Manatee County. And these were the folks who gutted wetlands protections. They Their first official act was firing Sherry Corrier, the um, well-respected county administrator. One of them has actually, during his term, was put on probation uh, because there was video surveillance of this man taking a big potted bougainvillea from somebody's property. I mean, you can't make this up, right? Um, Anthony Pettuccini's firm, Sim Wins, you know, what's notable about those races in Manatee County were the tactics that were used. They were, you know, mailers that were very unfair, uh, to candidates attacking incumbents, um, bringing national issues into local politics. If I, I've gone on to the um, Florida Department of State campaign finance website, and since February of 2020, when Sim wins that and that name anyway, I think Mr. Pettuccini has had other companies before. That named company since February of 2020 has received over $33 million in payments from state political committees, which these committees I'm talking about are all state political committees, not county, right? State political committees, as well as state candidates. Again, Simwins has been paid over $33 million in, in fees for their services which is massive, right? It's just so much money. Now here's the thing, that doesn't need, that doesn't include payments from county candidates uh, campaign coffers or city campaign coffers. It's just the state. So again, there are so many people that really care about these county races and who sits in those chairs. All right. There is a, a voter guide that's been um, going out. It's not just in Sarasota County, actually. Candidates who are being advised by Anthony Pettuccini, that seems to be the common thread, right? These candidates are, are handing out a voter guide that many are um, saying is, is in, actually fraudulent. It's misleading. So... This voter guide is funded by a political committee in Sarasota County, both Teresa Mass campaign and Neil Rainford's campaign have been handing out this voter guide at early voting locations. It's also been mailed to voters and it is it purports or it appears to be an endorsement from the Republican Party or and or Governor DeSantis. There's logos on there that suggest it's Florida GOP um, originating. And the thing is, the Republican Party doesn't endorse in primaries. That's their policy. And Governor DeSantis's office has been silent in confirming that he's been endorsing county commission candidates. Um, I know the Herald Tribune couldn't, couldn't get confirmation from him that these endorsements were valid. We know he's endorsed school board candidates, that we know, but county commission candidates, uh, we haven't seen that. So 
who is funding Make America Great Again is a political committee that is administered by Eric Robinson, our local, I call him the Prince of Dark Money because he has so many PACs that are active in so many of our local elections. Uh, so who's funding Make America Great Again, right? There is a political committee called Friends of Teresa Mast. And one of the things that's noteworthy is Teresa Mast is chairing her PAC. Why, why does that matter? Well, I know I ran in 2010 and it was really clear you were not allowed as a candidate to coordinate with a PAC. There was no way you could chair a PAC. Why is that the case? Well, it makes a joke of campaign finance laws. It essentially puts a candidate in a position of taking unlimited money via the political committee from donors and, you know, you don't want to create a situation of some kind of bribery situation or undue influence situation with a candidate. Having candidates aligned with political PACs does that. It creates this ethical problem. Well, Friends of Tami Teresa Mast has taken $10,000 in donations from Carlos Baruf affiliates, $5,000 from John Cannon Holmes, $10,000 from Schrader Manatee Ranch, the developer of Lakewood Ranch, as Rex Jensen heads that up, and $10,000 from Benderson Development. They've also got a PAC donation of over $54,000 from Strong Communities of Southwest Florida. Who's giving to Strong Communities of Southwest Florida? Well, 1-800-ASK-GARY, Gary Compothocrass, gave $5,000 to them. Hugh Culverhouse, a, another developer, $5,000. Uh, Benderson Affiliates gave $5,000. There's another very interesting donation. Propel Florida, it's an LLC in Lithia, Florida, which is like east of Brandon. They gave $650,000 to this strong communities of Southwest Florida that also donated to friends of Teresa Mast. What's interesting here is Propel Florida, there's no actual human being associated with this company. Um, even now the registered agent is um, doesn't actually exist. The registered agent is an LLC that I can't find on Sunbiz, even though it's, it's at the same address as Propel Florida. And has a very similar name, but it's not listed on Sunbiz uh, that I can find. So, you know, I've been used to seeing Wyoming corporations that are anonymously incorporated. I'm used to seeing Delaware corporations that are anonymously incorporated. I'm not used to seeing a Florida corporation that is anonymously incorporated. But that appears to be what we've got here uh, you know, in a money trail of funding to Friends of Teresa Mast. So Friends of Teresa Mast put $80,000 into Make America Great Again, which put out this vote, very questionable voter guide. Friends of Neil Rainford is a PAC. Um, Neil Rainford is not sharing this PAC, okay? That's good. But his treasurer, Eric Robinson, is administering this PAC. So again, you know, the overlap between the campaign and the PAC is, is absolutely there, right? The right hand and the left hand are the same. So it's they definitely know what they're doing. As you know, as I said, Eric Robinson is is the treasurer of Make America Great Again. So 40 grand going from Neil Rainford's pack into Make America Great Again, Friends of Neil Rainford, uh, for that, ostensibly for that voter guide, because he benefits from that voter guide. Who's who's donating to Friends of Neil Rainford? Well, Benderson Affiliates, $21,000. Pat Neal Affiliates, $5,000. Um, Welland Park, affiliates, you know, it's a development down in his district, $3,000. And you're seeing various um, other PACs that are giving. One thing that's interesting, um, Sarasota Manatee Defense Fund 
is a pack that the lion's share of its funding comes from a small developer named Michael Holderness. But Mr. Holderness uh, was very active in defeating what Sarasota voters approved to keep Beach Road in the public domain. So this is Friends of Neil Rainford, and this appears, you know, the, he certainly benefits from that voter guide. So if you see voter guides being handed out by Mr. Rainford's team or Mrs. Mast's team at early voting or on election day, just know that, that there's questions about the validity of that voter guide. And, and everybody, I just want to remind you that you are listening to the detail on WSLR 96.5 LPFM in Sarasota, Florida, and WBPV 100.1 LPFM in Bradenton, Florida. Programming at WSLR is supported by listeners like you and by Ringling College Galleries and Exhibitions. Ringling College's 2023-24 exhibition season features art from Ringling students, alumni, faculty, and nationally recognized artists from a wide range of mediums and from diverse backgrounds. More information is available at ringlingcollege.gallery. And so I am walking you all through some important dark money information uh, that's impacting our local elections. I hope you're registered to vote. If you're not, you need to register to vote. <laughs> and um, it won't be soon enough for August 20th, Tuesday is election day and early voting um, is in place through the weekend, through Sunday, and then election day will be Tuesday. Um, but we'll also be having our elections in November. So please make sure you register. Go to sarasotavotes.gov uh, to find out more information about that. So here's a pack, um, Night Fights for South Sarasota County. And this is a pack to support Tom Knight. He is chairing this pack. And um, this is not, I have it in green. It is not um, being administered by Mr. Robinson. So I, I've made a mistake on that one. Who is donating to Tom Knight's pack? Well, it is a different crew that I'm used to seeing. I don't see Benderson, Baruf, Neil, or um, Rex Jensen, Schrader Manatee Ranch. But Hugh Culverhouse is a developer. Um, he developed Palmer Ranch and he has given $60,000 to Tom Knight's PAC Night Fights for South County. You do see um, Chris Brown, who many know is, um, he is an, an merchant on Siesta Key, has put in his affiliates, have put in $3,000. A local attorney, Bernard Walsh, has put in $12,000. Um, John Gillio is, you know, an individual putting in $10,000. Julian Jamie Domenico, I hope I'm saying that right, $7,000. Mark O'Hara, $15,000. Uh, so, yes, there's definitely his his total pack intake right now. Last time I looked, $176,727. But um, it is a different crew of people. I mean, Mr. Culverhouse definitely has interests. I'm sure some, you know, I would expect some of these people do. So just know um, Tom Knight does have his own pack as well, and he is chairing his own pack. All right. I wanted to go back a little bit historically um, because the first candidate in Sarasota County that I'm aware of who chaired her own political pack was Bridget Ziegler. One of the things to understand, first of all, for most citizens, you're not gonna do this, right? Who has time to go on the state website? I know when I was raising kids and working full time, um, I I didn't have time to look this stuff up and, and I wasn't focused that as much uh, as I am now on these local races. But the thing is, the way campaign finance deadlines work in Florida, it is impossible to know in real time who is paying into a PAC because the reporting deadlines, there's such significant lag time. So this was the data that was available about Bridget Ziegler's PAC right before the August 2022 election when she ran for school board. 
What could we know then? Well, there were some significant things. Shark Coast Tactical is a gun shop and they gave $5,000 to Friends of Bridget Ziegler, which I don't know why any school board member who's chairing their own pack would accept money from a gun shop just given what's going on in American schools with gun violence. The founder of Moms for Liberty taking, and I'm like, I understand the Second Amendment. That's not the issue. It's the optics of this situation and basically being so mm, uh, insensitive, <laughs> I think that's putting it mildly, to the concerns of parents and students who are literally no, you know, having to go through drills in school about getting shot up and, you know, having a shooter. And yet we've got a school board member taking money from a gun shop. Uh, for whatever reason, the media didn't report on this, which I think was a big oversight, um, big mistake. Dan Miller is Karen Rose's husband, and she serves on the school board, and he put $2,000 into Friends of uh, Bridget Ziegler. Anyway, that's noteworthy. Caroline Weatherington is the wife of Lee Weatherington. She's also a member of the Council on National Policy, and she gave $10,000 to Friends of Bridget Ziegler. Then you had these donations from Jacksonville, Florida, which were bizarre. Again, you know, you saw these um, strange out of out of area donations in a prior pack um, to the one attacking Tom Knight. Here you've got Jacksonville uh, Fraternal Order of Police giving money to friends of Bridget Ziegler and uh, somebody named Andrew Mayer and Eugene Stokes. And they're from Jacksonville. And it really doesn't make a lot of sense. So, you know, you got to look at these packs after the election, because then the bigger picture emerges. And what we can see with friends of Bridget Ziegler is that there are a couple of things. One is actually the gun the gun shop gave another five grand. So the amount of money went up to $10,000 from Shark Coast Tactical. Again, <laughs> not a good look for a school board member to be funded by a gun shop, in my opinion. Um, Pat Neal, gave $7,000 to friends of Bridget Ziegler. Didn't know that before the election. The other big one is school development HC finance. Who are they? Well, they build charter schools, specifically corporate charter schools. And as many people um, know, but it's, it's still worth discussing, charter schools can be great right? And school choice can be a very good thing. But not all, in particular, corporate charter schools have a profit motive. And what does that look like? Well, a corporate charter school will set up one corporation for the actual school, but then they'll set up a different corporation that owns the building. They'll build the building like this company that gave Bridget Ziegler $2,500 so they'll build the school and then they'll administer the school and they will lease the property to the actual school entity. The problem is gouging the school board budget because the cost of the lease, typically for an average school board budget, the cost of the physical facility or the building is about 13% of the budget. But with a corporate charter school situation that's leasing from their own real estate entity, that amount can be up to, we've seen 43% in Miami, a 43% of the budget lease has been reported. Um, I know Imagine Schools, there's a great paper called is Our Charter Schools, the Second Coming of Enron. They talk about this issue in that paper. You can find it in Citizens for Sarasota County and Facebook in the files section. So the gouging of the school board budget um, for these leases is an issue. And those leases are then um, bundled and sold as financial derivatives on Wall Street. So you're taking resources. This is not the most efficient way to provide a school building at all. Um, 
the school board, the school winds up being gouged in many cases. And Wall Street is benefiting or investors are benefiting from this guaranteed rate of return, right? But it's not great. It's it's not great for our students because resources are being siphoned from education to pay investors. This would have been important information for voters to know before the election. And it would be a great thing in Florida if we could change our laws so that there'd be a cutoff and that there's no donations uh, before the election that can't be shown completely to voters. You see what I'm saying? We shouldn't be in the dark about who's funding every dime of what's going to candidates. And these reporting, the lag in reporting is a problem. That would have been important for people to know. But I think it was strategically held until after the election to keep voters in the dark. That's that's my belief. Now, the other thing that I think a lot of voters would be would have been interested in is that Bridget Ziegler chairing her pack paid Christian Ziegler's company, Micro Targeted Media, uh, over twenty one thousand dollars for text messaging, uh, you know, to support her, I would expect so. To have a school board member sharing their own pack that is then paying into their household, right, uh, for services, I think is something a lot of voters would want to know about before the election. Okay, this is just a historic example of what can go on with PACs or the kind of subterfuge and confusion that happened with a, a pack called Suncoast Alliance. And this was to, Sarasota County voters had approved single member districts. So we are electing our county commissioners by district now. Instead of having to cover the whole county, which is like running for Congress, there's like 440,000 plus residents in Sarasota County. Um, now, because it's elected by district, county commission seats are by district, a grassroots candidate has to cover about 80,000 to 90,000 people, not over you know, 440,000. So the development community didn't like this. And there was a pact called Suncoast Alliance in the election, they, they put an amendment, the county commission, put an amendment on the ballot in August of 2022 for the March election. It was December, actually, for the March 2022 election to overturn single member districts. I think it was a confusing amendment. It wasn't as clear as it could be, but that was what they did. And right before the election, once again, you could not tell it, and it was still difficult after, and I'll get to that. You couldn't really tell who was funding this. There was $220,000 that went into the PAC Suncoast Alliance that was working against single member districts from a committee that was identified as Serious Conservatives C4. But Serious Conservatives C4 doesn't exist. It is not listed with the Florida Department of State. There is a serious conservatives that's listed. Um, there is a PAC called conservatives that's listed. There is a PAC called conservative leadership committee, although we learned that actually was it's not a political committee. Um, we knew that Benderson Development gave $9,000 to Suncoast Alliance, but we couldn't know where was this money coming from serious conservatives, C4, a political committee that wasn't actually listed? So after the election, and, and this political committee, Suncoast Alliance, recently closed in April. But this was the place where I saw, and it was in December of uh, 2022, well after the March election, that conservative leadership committee was conflated with the political committee conservatives. There was still no explanation 
for a serious conservative C4. In fact, to this day, that has never been resolved. But these other very similar named PACs were giving money to each other. Um, one of them, serious conservatives, actually got 170 grand donation from Suncoast Alliance. But this is where I discovered that at that time, um, you know, in 2022, Pat Neal had given over a million dollars to the political committee conservatives. Today, it's over $2 million. And conservative leadership committee, alternately, um, they, they can be the um, donating entity, even though, the, and they're listed as political committee, but they're not. And conservatives appears to be the intake entity. And that conflating of one conservative leadership committee with the PAC conservatives, once again, I don't know why the state of Florida would permit this. Um, and it it is, I believe, a tactic to, to confuse voters. When, so now I just going to show you who was against, and it's the usual suspects, <laughs> the Stop Stealing Our Votes political PAC. Um, this was the initial vote for single member districts. Of course, they were against that. That vote was in November of 2018. And you see Pat Neal giving $10,000 to the political committee, Stop Stealing Our Votes, the Argus Foundation, which Christine Robinson is the president of, um, gave over $70,000 to prevent single member districts from happening. Gulf Coast Builders Exchange gave $15,000. The Manatee Sarasota Building Industry Association, now they're called the Suncoast Building um, Association, SBA, before they went by BIA, BIA, Manatee Sarasota Building Industry Association, they gave, um, let me see here if I can, I'm, I'm not, oh, $15,000. Okay, they gave 15,000. So John Mast is the CEO, Teresa Mast's husband of the Manatee Sarasota Building Industry Association, now the Suncoast Building industry association or, or building association. Um, but Teresa Mast is on the board as well. So as once again, um, it's just a relationship for people to be aware of that we do have um, someone running for county commission who was on, it is actually on the board of a lobbying association for the building industry. Uh, likewise, we had a county commissioner, Christine Robinson, become the president of the Argus Foundation, which is a lobbying association for business interests. So we don't have a very good track record here in Sarasota County of keeping these ethical um, lines clean, these conflict of interest areas clean. So I want to end on a pack that I've noticed that I think may become important. And this is called the Sarasota Arts and Cultural Coalition. And what's noteworthy to me about this pack is that the donors, first of all, the name, right? The Sarasota Arts and Cultural Coalition. It's chaired by planning board, the city of Sarasota's uh, planning board member, Dan Claremont. And, you know, honestly, for me to have, once again, candidates chairing PACs, I don't think that's a good idea. I don't really think having public officials chairing PACs is a good idea. But let's take a look at the contributions to this PAC. And, and bear in mind, this is a PAC that's registered, right? It's registered in Tallahassee. It's um, administrators are in Tampa. They're not in Sarasota. And this to me has the look of a PAC that is poised to be active in city of Sarasota elections. 
if you're going to be active in city elections, you're supposed to register with the city of Sarasota's clerk. If you're going to be registered uh, active in county elections, you should be registered with Sarasota County. Why does that matter? Well, it's just so voters know what's going on, that they can go to their city website or their county website and to have them have to hunt for a PAC on the state website that's active in their local elections is, is ridiculous. This is not the way it's supposed to work. Um, but anyway, you can see the donors to this PAC. There's a gentleman named Ronald Sugar who has put in $25,000, is quite significant. Dean Scarborough, $10,000. Andrew Economos on uh, Longboat Key has put in $5,000. William Vernon, $5,000. Kojo is listed as a financial services um, organization. But when you look it up, it, you know, there's a restaurant downtown named Kojo at the same address on Sunbiz. It says hospitality search services. So this looks like it's coming from that restaurant. William McComb gave $5,000. There is Casey Investments and they put in $5,000. Larry Saslaw, 2,500, Kim Githler, 2,500, Dan Claremont, LLC, 2,500, Charles Githler, 2,500. Casey Investments is Kirk and Chris Volker. Um, Chris Volker serves on the did. So again, it's like a public official getting involved with PACs. But like I said, I don't know what's going to what this PAC will be doing. They have over $100,000. It appears to me they're going to be involved in a city or county election. We'll see. When you get mailers, do your best to research them or talk to your neighbors. Be more skeptical of, about who's trying to influence your vote and what they're really about. I hope everybody who's been dealing with flooding um, is getting the help that they need. Everybody be sure to stay tuned for more public affairs programming here on WSLR. Make it a great day.